In this video, I'm going to explain how to use R to get data out of an API. And I'm going to be using this API here. This is postcode.io. It's um, one of the APIs that I use most often uh, to get data on different postcodes. And also it's a very easy API to get started with because it's not got any requirements for keys. It's not got any limits that I'm aware of. Um, and uh, it's quite straightforward in terms of phrasing a query to this API. Now, to do this, I'm going to follow a notebook that I've created for you. This is called Using Postcodes API. It's on the data journalism repo. It's in the API folder, and it's the second link here in our markdown file explaining how to work with an API in R. So you can find it at that address and I'm going to work through that in R. First of all though, it's worth playing with the website for postcodes.io. Um, if you go to postcodes.io and scroll down, you'll see it's it's got this section which says API endpoint and methods. Um, elsewhere in another video I've discussed what methods are. They're basically a way of asking a question of an API and the very first one here is to look up the postcode and that's what we want to um, do. Uh, so you can kind of, this is a bit of a playground, it's a bit of a way to try out the API and what you do is you type the postcode here where it says postcode and then click on request and it will show you what result you would get if you did a request for that postcode. But what's important here is what it's also doing is showing you the address that you would need to use to actually get this data. So there's a distinction here between the web page that allows you to play around with it and where you would actually get the data yourself because this is still a HTML web page. We've just got a box here with the data. If you were to use the API properly, you need to copy this address, which is the address to query the API, and you're going to repeat what you've done here and put the um, postcode at the end of it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to open a new window. I'm going to paste that address and then I'm going to type that postcode again and this time you'll see the result is a little bit different instead of getting a HTML web page with some stuff in the middle of it what we've got is pure JSON and this looks uh, reasonably structured on my browser because I've installed the JSON view extension so it's it's added that structure to it but we can see this is pure JSON and that's what you want to see when you're testing out an API in this way in the browser. So we could just do this, we could just save this and convert it to a CSV and we would have our data. But what we really want to do is do this dozens or hundreds of times for lots of different uh, postcodes and we want to extract just one piece of information from all this data. And in order to do that we're going to need to turn to some coding, we're going to need to use R. So that's what this notebook walks you through. At this point then let's switch to um, R and that notebook that I just showed you and again this this walks through what we're about to do so it does explain a lot of the things I'm going to explain in this video and you can uh, read that notebook as a way of learning about this technique as well and in fact you should have this open yourself in R before you continue so do pause now and make sure you've got that uh, if you need to. So um, one thing I'm going to change about it is the um, postcode that we've queried, which is B47AP. Um, so let's go down to the first code chunk. And in this line, this is the first piece of code, what we're doing is we're storing a string of characters in a variable that we're going to call URL. So if I run that code, um, and in fact, before I do that, I'm going to remove a whole bunch of uh, variables just to clear up the view. There we go. So when we run that code, we get this one variable up here, here, and it's a string variable. It's a string of characters. It's the URL. Notice that this is just a string of characters it's not the actual web page we're gonna we need another step before we can actually fetch the web page at that URL so 
that's the first line of code. If I scroll down to the second line of code, in these two lines what we're doing is we're installing a package. Now a package in R is basically a collection of code, a collection of functions that uh, normally revolve around a particular type of problem. This package, JSON Lite, is designed to solve problems related to JSON, which is what we've got. We're going to fetch some JSON and we're going to need to handle it. So we've got two lines of code here. The first one installs the package and the second one activates it. So in R you need to do both of those steps for some packages. Um, in this case, we've actually already got JSON Lite installed and it's probably installed on your version of R as well. But I'm just going to run these lines anyway. If you've already got it installed, uh, then you don't need to run this line, but I'm going to run both of those. It's going to ask me to restart it. I'm going to say, okay, yes. And I'm probably going to have to run this one again. And we can see it running down here. It's restarting the R session. It's downloaded it. And now we've got the package uh, activated. Moving on to the third piece of code then. Now that we've uh, activated this JSON Lite package, we can use functions from it. And from JSON is one of those packages. So if I start typing, I'm going to create a new variable called JSON EG, and I'm going to use from JSON. Now, as I start typing that, you can see it actually says the library, the package, sorry, that it's from, which is JSON Lite. So you can see it there. Um, you can actually, one thing I quite like to do is type the name of the library first and then two colons. That's another way of doing the same thing. It's just a nice way of indicating uh, to yourself as much as anything which package this function has come from. So I run that code. I know what it will do is it will run that from JSON uh, function on the variable URL. So this basically what this function does is it fetches JSON from a URL and you just need to give it the URL. So in this case it's actually gone to, it's recognized this string as the, as the address of a web page, it's gone to that web page and fetched the JSON at that address. So um, it stored that then in JSON EG and that's what we've got over here. And you can see it's a list with two items in it. Now, if I switch back to the browser, you might be able to see the two items. The first item is this status branch, and the second is the result branch. So this is what happens when you fetch um, JSON, it will essentially store it as a list of branches. And here we've got the two branches. This one you can expand, the other branch just has one piece of information in it. So we're going to have to drill down into this and that's what we do next. First of all, in this line of code, we simply print out effectively the uh, contents of this new variable that we've created by fetching that JSON at this address. And you can see we've got the status from here, we've got result and then we've got underneath result we've got the postcode branch of result we've got the quality branch here as well and so on. So what, what these little dollar signs mean is each kind of extra branch. So we've got the result branch and then we've got the result branch and the postcode branch within that, the result branch and the quality branch within that and so on. And in fact if we go down to the code section, if I scroll down here until we get to that, you'll eventually see we've got the result branch, the codes branch, the parish branch within that. So it's Drilling down again, another layer still. So that's just shown us what's in that object. To drill down ourselves into that object, we can use those dollar signs as well. So I'm just going to type it out so you see what happens. If I type the name of the variable and then a dollar sign, it's going to show me what branches there are. So we've got status and we've got result. So I can select status and I can run that code and I'll get the result 200. That's the value of the status branch. I can drill down further by adding more 
dollar signs. So in this example, I can go into JSON EG, branch, result, which is where most of the data is, and then add another dollar sign. And now I can see all the branches within that. So maybe I might want to go down to CCG, uh, or I might want to go down to codes, which has got even more still, and add another dollar sign. And again, I can see a number of options here. So let's pick parliamentary constituency. And if I run that code, we'll get a code for the parliamentary constituency. Now that's just the code, but maybe I want the name of the constituency, which is here. So if we look at this structure here, we can see it within result and then within parliamentary constituency. So again, I'll type JSON EG, then the first branch is result. Within that, I want parliamentary constituency. And if I run that code, it will show me the parliamentary constituency in the JSON. So we're learning how to kind of explore the JSON verb, but again, we're not doing anything that we couldn't have done in the browser or by saving this and um, converting it. At this point, then, we need to move on to loops. Loops are very useful in programming and in data journalism because they allow us to perform one action multiple times. And with postcodes, that multiple times action is likely to be converting a postcode into a constituency or some other, some other piece of administrative information. So we're going to want to loop through a whole bunch of postcodes. And to do that, we need a list of postcodes. Now, that might be a list of postcodes in a data frame, in a, in a table that's in one of the columns. Um, in this case, I'm just going to create a list from scratch just to demonstrate the process. So what I've done here is I've um, created a vector with the C function. And this vector, and remember a vector is just a list, it's a list of postcodes. And notice that each of these is a string, so each of these is in quotation marks, and each one is separated by a comma. So those three strings are the ingredients for this C function. When that runs, it's going to create a vector, and it's going to store that vector, it's going to assign it, to this variable we're calling postcodes. It doesn't exist yet. It's going to be created when we run this code. So when I run that code, nothing's going to print here, but over here, we're going to see that variable now appear in our environment, and it's got some details. It's a character vector. It's got three items, and these are the first three items. So now we've got a, a list, a vector. We can loop through that vector. Um, and the way to loop through uh, a, a number of items in R is to use um, what's called for, a for loop. This is the same in other languages as well, in JavaScript, in Python. And the structure of a for loop has a number of parts. First of all, we begin with the word for. Then we have something in brackets. And then after that, we have something in curly brackets. Now, the bit in curly brackets is what we want it to do each time it loops through a list, a vector. And the bit in brackets is basically what uh, vector we want it to loop through, in this case, postcodes, and what we want it to call each item as it loops through. So what this is saying is, go through the vector postcodes, which has three items, and for each of those items, call it i. Then inside these curly brackets, it's going to do something with that i for each time it goes through that, uh, for each item in the list. So in other words, the first time it's going to go through that list, it's going to grab the first item, b47ap, and it's going to store it in i then it's going to print it because here's i again and it's printing that object. Now this vector has um, a second item so it's going to then move on to that and it's going to assign that bl23qq to i so i is going to change from one value to another and it's going to print that 
again. And then the third time, there's a third item in the list, so it's going to grab that, it's going to assign that to the variable i, and it's going to print that. So everything inside these curly brackets happens as many times as there are items in the vector. So in this case, there are three items in the vector, so it's going to run this command three times, once for each item. And each time, this i is going to change to the item at that position. So the first time it's going to be the first item, the second time it's going to be the second item, and the third time it's going to be the third item. So when I run this code, you'll see it prints very quickly, it goes through, it prints the first item, it prints the second item, it prints the third item. So a very simple loop. The other thing I haven't mentioned is in, so we've always got in, and essentially the, the structure of a, of a for loop is always going to be the word for, followed by an open bracket, followed by the name you want to give the item uh, that it's handling each time. Uh, and conventionally that's often called I, but it can be called anything that you want. Then the word in, then the name of the vector that you want to loop through, then a close brackets, then open curly brackets, then the action that you want to happen each time that the loop runs, so in other words, for each item in the list, in the vector, and then the closed curly brackets. And there's lots more you can read about loops in R and in programming generally, but that's how we're using it here. If, if you need to know more about that, then do um, read or find some YouTube videos about loops in R. Now this is useful at the moment we've just printed those postcodes, but we're probably going to want to use them to form a URL and then query this API. So how do we do that? We need to combine the postcode with this basic URL that is the query. So you'll remember the query was api.postcodes.io slash postcodes and then the postcode at the end. You can combine two strings in R, which is what we're going to need to do here. We're going to combine the first part of URL with the second part by using the function paste. Uh, the function paste takes as its ingredients basically as many strings as you want to combine. So we've got two here. If I press play now and run this code, you'll see the result is now one string that combines the two. Um, and you can use a variable instead of a string, so as long as that's a string variable, you can, uh, in this case, have stored a string in this variable postcode, and then in the next line, have combined that string variable with the other string, like so. And you can see the result here. Now you might notice that there's a space in the middle where the join has happened, so by default, the paste function will insert a space between each thing that it's joining. To stop that happening, you need to add an extra argument to the paste function, which is the sep equals argument. And this is specifying what your separator is. So instead of the space, you're going to want that separator to be something else. And in this case, we're specifying that the separator should be nothing. So it's an empty string, open, close, quotation marks. So that makes our function slightly longer. It's, um, we've got two strings, this one then a comma, and then the next one. And then we've got another comma and this extra argument set equals open close quotes. And when we run that, we see um, a very similar result, but this time no space between the two parts that have been joined. So instead of doing this once, we can put this inside the loop so that for each of the postcodes, it will add it to this base string, this basic string that we identified, um, and generate a list of URLs. So this time again it's going to go through that vector of postcodes and for each of those postcodes i here is going to be added to the end of this URL with no separator. And then it's going to print the results. So those, now we've got very quickly generated three URLs that we can use to query the API three times. The next step then is to 
query and not just generate these URLs. So we've got a very similar loop again, but we've extended it a little bit. So it's got a few more lines of code. The first line then is the same. It's going to loop through the vector and for each item it's going to call it i. We then got this line of code where it generates the URL, which is the same again. We're now adding comments by the way. You'll notice there's a line here with hash at the start, which has gone green. So that just explains what's happening in the next line, but it doesn't actually do anything. It's just a comment. Likewise, we've got another comment here that explains uh, a new line, which is taking this URL that we've created. It's running the from JSON function on it and it's storing the result in a variable called JSON EG. Now, we've already created a variable called JSON EG, and we've actually already created a, a variable called URL as well. But this variable is now going to change because we're gonna change it to the results of this. And the other variable, JSON EG, is going to change as well because we're gonna replace it with the results of this. And then finally, it's going to print the results of this. And in this part, we're drilling down, as we did before, into this new variable JSON EG, or the changed variable that's been replaced. We're going to drill down into it and get the parliamentary constituency of that postcode. So this should, again, it should run three times, one for each of the items in the list. It's going to take each postcode in turn, add it to this URL, then fetch the JSON and then drill down into it for the parliamentary constituency and print the results. And in fact, um, I might break this down a little bit further and um, store the constituency and then print it separately like that. So it's easier to, to see what's happening. So I'm going to say store it, and I'm going to say print it. So let's see watch what happens when I run that. There we go. So very quickly, it's done that. It's fetched, generated URL, fetched it, stored it, and printed it. And in constituency, we can see the last one that was stored, the last postcard that was fetched, um, and the last URL that was generated because this, uh, this variable has actually changed, all three of these variables and I, this variable here has changed um, three times as this has looped through. So it's been different each time it's looped. So we've printed those results, but we haven't stored them. So let's do that in this next chunk of code. Um, again, very similar to the previous result but this time we've stored a constituency and um, we've got this results list. So these two lines are the key lines to focus on in this chunk of code, these are the new lines. The first one, it creates a completely empty um, vector, which we're calling results list. And we've created an empty vector because we need to fill it later on. What this line down here does is it um, does two things in two parts. So and in fact, I've used an equal sign, which is uh, Python-esque rather than R-like. So I've just changed that. Um, so the first part on the right here uh, creates a new vector by combining results list, which you'll remember is empty to begin with, with constituency which is whatever it's fetched from the postcode that it's currently looping through. So the first time that this loop runs, it's going to combine nothing with a constituency. And the result will be a vector with one item in it. It's going to store that vector with one item of it in it in results list. So in other words, it's going to replace results list, which was empty, with a vector that now has one item in it. The second time that the loop runs, and remember this all runs three times, whereas this, this line only runs once. So this line's gonna run once, it's gonna create an empty vector. Then the first time this loop runs, it's going to store one item and replace it 
replace the empty vector with a vector of one item. The second time it runs, the vector's now got one item in it. It's going to add another item to it, so it's going to have two. And then that two item vector is going to be stored in here again. So that's going to be replaced with what's now a one item vector gets replaced with a two item vector. And then the third time, two item vector here, add another item, which makes a three item vector. And that's going to be used to replace the two item vector, which now is a three item vector. That can be quite kind of mind blowing. It's hard to get your head around, but it may just be easier to run it and see how it works and, and see how it happens. Um, so there it goes. We've, we're still printing, but if you look over here, we've got that results list here with the three items in it. Now what we can do, if you want to, to see how that results list changes, is um, we can print results list here. And I'll just run it again. So the first time it runs, the results list is empty before it gets filled. The second time, in fact, I'm gonna move it um, here and run it again, okay. So the first time it gets filled with Birmingham Ladywood and that's what's in there. The second time it's got Birmingham Ladywood and Bolton North East and uh, the final time it's got Birmingham Ladywood, Bolton North East and Sutton Coalfield. So this line here, it's actually all three. So that's it really. You've, you've um, done a number of things here. We've First of all, looked at how to use an API in practical terms. We've looked at how to fetch the JSON from that API. Uh, we've also looked at packages. So the idea of using a package to perform a specialist function, in this case, fetching JSON. We've looked at drilling down into JSON using those dollar signs. And we've looked at for loops as a way of looping through a number of uh, items, in this case postcodes, to generate a number of different queries to fetch multiple pieces of data. And we've also looked at creating um, an empty vector and then adding to that vector and replacing itself as you loop through to store the results of that query. Do take some time to, to go through the notebook yourself and pause this video and, and go back and forth so that you've gone through that process of querying the API, the postcards API, and then bring any questions you have to the class.